It's tea time. Cheers. I am Patricia Moore and I come out here week to week to spill my tea. It is the good news as I am growing, learning, and getting closer to God. I am building my relationship more and more each day, leaning, depending, and resting on him. And I want you to do the same. So that's what I come on here for. So we can talk. So I can talk about some things that I'm going through that I've seen, that I've experienced. Child, you just got to get to know them for yourself. That's all I'm going to tell you. In this season, let's talk about it. Everybody is thinking about their wants and needs. That You probably got a gift list, something that you're thinking about that you want. Well, for me, the gifts that I want is something only God can deliver. Only God. I don't have a gift list of Christmas presents, but there are things that I have been petitioning God for, and he knows exactly what that is. And it dawned on me the other day that with all the praying, you know, he says, ask and it shall be given. Don't cease in your prayers. With all of that, there's one thing that I believe that's missing. We get caught up so much in asking. It's like our kids. When it doesn't come fast enough, when we don't get an answer, we feel like, well, maybe you didn't hear me. Maybe I need to come back again. Maybe I need to keep telling you. Maybe I need to wear you out because you didn't hear me the first time. And I tell my kids, I heard you. But what I always tell them is, I need to see you be grateful. Can you show me gratefulness? So the difference in praying and getting the response is that part in the middle. What is your response? Worship. Worship. God knows you've communicated with him. He loves that you don't give up. He loves that you consistently tell him. But the other part is, can you respond in worship, especially when things aren't happening fast enough, especially when you haven't gotten the answer, or especially when things didn't turn out the way that you thought it should turn out? I believe we get so focused in wants and needs, and God is like, if I provide for the birds of the air, the flowers in the field, surely enough, being a loving father and you know me and you read my scriptures, you know that I'm going to give you my best. So why can't you just worship me? Why can't you get in a posture of just saying, Lord, I know that you are going to do it. And so here's my heart of worship. I'm going to worship like it's already done. I'm going to worship believing the scriptures because in the scriptures, it says we thank you, oh God, we give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. That's Psalm 75 and 1, the New Living Translation. We thank you, oh God. Let's have a heart of thankfulness, not just because Thanksgiving passed, but a heart of thankfulness always because we want to worship you because we know the things that we are petitioning you for. If our hearts are aligned with you, if our desires are aligned with you. We find our desires in you, God. You have wonderful deeds for us. The next scripture says, but the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. The father is looking for those who will worship him that way for God is spirit. So those who worship him, us, must worship in spirit and truth. That's John 4, 23 through 24 NLT. People will be able to worship God in every place. Why? Because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Usher him in. Invite him in. If you don't know how to worship, if the first response you have when you wake up in the morning is to ask God for something, Quiet yourself and ask the Holy Spirit before I open my mouth. Show me how to worship God because I know he already knows what I stand in need for. But before I ask him, like my kids, can you come in the morning and say, good morning, mommy. How are you? Or when I pick you up from school, hey, mom, how was your day? Not, hey, mom, where's my snacks? Hey, mom, can you turn on the internet so I can use my phone? Like I know, and maybe all of you are not parents, but I know you live this life. Maybe when you go to work and you walk in and the first thing somebody says to you is what they need and want from you. How about if they just 
worshiped or honored the fact that you're here. I appreciate the fact that you showed up for work. I, I think you're a valuable asset. Good morning to you. I acknowledge your presence. We need to start acknowledging his presence and getting in the habit of sometimes not asking for stuff, but just saying, Lord, I acknowledge you. I know that you do great things. And it says, it goes on further to say, therefore, God's people everywhere will become the new temple where God dwells. That's the most important part about worship. Because if we're here to be living examples of God, if we're here to be in Christ form, if we've taken up our Christ and we want to show other people the good deeds that God has done, then somehow we have to show that God dwells within us. And how do we do that? By worshiping in every circumstance. If there's a problem, you know what? I didn't get to the point where I'm no longer stressed. I don't have anxiety. I don't have worries. I'm going to show you how I worship because I believe God that much. We got to stand boldly and show that we believe God that much that whatever is going on, we could throw up our hands and say, Lord, I trust you. I love you. I thank you. If um, another scripture says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him. Thank him. It says, tell him about everything, but don't forget to thank him for all he has done. Philippians 4 through 6. This is another promise of God. May the Lord bless and protect you. We know he's going to bless and protect us. It's in his word. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. If that's not enough for you to like, you know what? Yes, I'm going to worship you. That's found in Numbers 6, 24 and 26. And I'm giving you these scriptures because if you don't know how to worship, if you can't remember God's promises, then you can write these down and go back and say, Lord, this is where my heart is. I don't want to just use you. You know, sometimes we say people use us. Well, don't we use God? Don't we think we could just tell him what we want and we expect him to do something? Isn't that using Another scripture, oh Lord, I will honor and praise your name for you are my God. You do such wonderful things. You planned them long ago and now you have accomplished them. That's Isaiah 25 and 1 NLC. Lastly, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. That's Lamentations 3, 21 through 24 NLT. Let me tell you something. God is good and he's worthy of our praise. So think about your response. This season is all about giving and people wanting though and needing and having a whole entire list. But at the top of your list, more than anything, you should say, Lord, because you're faithful, I will remember this, to worship you, to honor you, and give you the glory that you deserve. All right, y'all. Cheers.